this altar started so we had blow the trumpet in zion 2022 and we were fasting the whole month and on this note i want to inform us that next year in feb we are again going to pray and fast uh, for the whole month of february so you can plan it in advance you can plan that uh, february of 2024 i'll be fasting for 28 days and uh, plan it in advance yeah so when we had that fasting for 28 days god did so many amazing things uh the testimonies from that btz are just two 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 men uh it was a turning point for so many people's lives now at the end of at the end of btz we asked ourselves so where do we go from here it 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 had been such an awesome time in the presence of god and we just didn't want to to leave so we found a scripture in acts 1 13 verse 14 1 acts chapter 1 verse 13 to 14 it says and when they had entered the city they mounted the stairs to the upper room where the, in the amplifier it says where they were indefinitely staying peter john james andrew philip and thomas bartholomew matthew james and simon the zero and judah son of james all of these with their minds in full agreement devoted themselves steadfastly to prayer waiting together with the women and mary the mother of jesus and with his brothers okay so when we got that scripture we said this is it we believed that god was speaking to us not to just leave the altar, but to stay and to stay indefinitely. So those of us who at that time, we determined that the altar was now going to be a perpetual altar, a perpetual online altar. And since we saw that they mounted the stairs to the upper room, where they were indefinitely staying so we now move from being called blow the trumpet in zion to being called the upper room church without walls ah, somebody enjoying that background so and we called it the church without walls because ah it was this altar was a gathering of people across uh, uh, from different parts of the world different denominations and what we were we gather here chigali us sweden where <laughs> by the way the other day i was talking to somebody who prayed for a breakthrough in btz of this year and has prayed for a scholarship and is now in sweden isn't God faithful now in Sweden and uh, is uh, is in the process of establishing an upper room fellowship in Sweden isn't God amazing <laughs> ah yellow boss so uh -huh. so we decided that we were going to stay here indefinitely and stay here indefinitely doing what verse 14 all of these with their minds in full agreement devoted themselves steadfastly to prayer so this altar every single day we are devoted to prayer mm. 
in the if you, if they ask you what is this thing we hear upper room church without walls what is this about the answer is simple it is about prayer it is a group of people who gather from different corners of the world and they are with their minds they are in full agreement devoting themselves steadfastly to prayer they are indefinitely seeking god so we are here until the lord jesus comes back hallelujah oh so the church without walls is an altar where we seek god indefinitely so if you've come to attend the seminar we invite you when the seminar ends the next day we are back <laughs> glory to god the next day we are back because of uh, I, uh that uh, acts chapter 1 13 14 we are indefinitely staying and then isaiah chapter 56 verse 7 who isaiah 56 verse 7 says i already feel the anointing of the holy ghost isaiah 56 7 says all these I will bring to my holy mountain and make them joyful in my house of prayer. Yes. All these I will bring to my holy mountain and make them joyful in my house of prayer. Their burnt offerings and... Oh, this is why prayers have been answered so much on this altar. Their burnt offerings and their sacrifices will be accepted on my altar. For my house shall be called a house of prayer for all peoples. Glory to God. They, they, their burnt offerings and their sacrifices will be accepted on my altar. We have discovered, some of us, we have discovered a secret our our offerings and our sacrifices our prayers on this altar they are accepted tebosta they are accepted their burnt offerings and their sacrifices will be accepted on my altar for my house will be called a house of prayer for all peoples yes that is what this is a house of prayer for all peoples a church without walls. It, we are a church where we pray without ceasing. If you've heard that scripture which says pray without ceasing, it happens here. We pray every day. There is somebody here. If you come at 5 a.m. every day, Sunday to Sunday, you'll find somebody here to pray with. Ha. Glory to God. Yeah, we pray for all, all nations. It's a house of prayer for all nations. Uh, then, on this altar, we also learn to pray. You know, one of the things that I need to tell you about prayer is, you know, it's <laughs> your flesh. Your flesh does not, your flesh should never wake up and say, Ah, you need to pray. Your flesh is not in the business of encouraging you to pray. <laughs> you know how you have. Some of us have struggled to wake up this morning. Some have actually not yet woken up. <laughs> Who were supposed to wake up? Because the flesh is not among the people who encourage you to pray. And sometimes when you want to pray, you know that you come to prayer and like, now what, what do I say? Where do I start? Even those of us who are seasoned Christians, have been saved for a long time, you realize that prayer is not something that you say, ah, now this is a, ah. So many times you need someone to hold your hand eh? in prayer. You need someone to hold your hand. Many times you need to be stirred up. Do I have a witness? Many times you need to, you know, it's like, like prayer thrives in community. Prayer, prayer thrives when uh, there's another, sometimes you, you, you sometimes I've come for, for this altar and you are literally half, a, I don't want to say, I want to be optimistic. I don't want to say half asleep, I want to say half awake. <laughs> Do I have a witness of there might be even some who are present here and you are half awake? awake 
So you come, you are half awake. You are half awake. But, <clears throat> excuse me, as, as, as prayer goes on, something like scales get off your eyes, and then, then something, then, then something happens, then something happens, and by the time they end, the time has been so short, and then you continue. So what has happened is that there has been what the Bible calls mutual edification. Yes. So sometimes you need somebody to stir you up. And then there are some of us, of course, we know that when we um, got born again, uh, they told us, uh, now you have given your life to Jesus. Now read your Bible. <laughs> and pray every day and you will grow they never told us how to read our bibles they never told us how to pray they just say ah you have you have given your life to jesus now if you pray every day you will grow and they left you to figure out how to pray some of us we've been figuring it out for years <laughs> Ah, you've been figuring it out for years. Do I have a witness? Figuring out this prayer thing, figuring out this Bible thing. You've been trying to figure it out. Now, here, I tell you the truth. You learn how to pray. Because, you know, sometimes you, how you learn how to pray is by listening to people pray. Basically, how I teach my children to pray is by them listening to me pray my my god is you know is is about to be two years but uh, she she also prays yeah <laughs> she also prays uh, the, 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 the other day the, the, i reached home and my children said emanuela is is uh, started praying so they say emanuela pray emanuela pray then she says, ta, 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 Amen. <laughs> you see, she, she, I think one of us in the house maybe prays like that or say something like that. But, uh, you know, the children learn to pray by listening to the parents pray. So if a parent hear and your children never hear you pray, you're raising up a prayerless seed. They, they, they must hear you pray. They must hear you pray. The other day we were in church, and then I saw my son. We call him the man of God, Daniel. And uh, the man was pacing up and down and, and talking, pacing, <laughs> pacing up. And I said, I told my wife, did you see Daniel? He was pacing up and down. I think he watched somebody do it uh -huh. so this altar you hear people you'll hear how do they pray for the nation how do they pray for marriages how do they pray so sometimes for you if you struggle to pray just come to this altar or silike <laughs> or silike just listen just listen ah so they do uh, so they pray like this so they pray like this so they pray like this ah, ah, ah. after a while something called a spirit of prayer will fall on you yeah there's something there's such a thing as a spirit of prayer that one cannot be taught in class and whatever it is caught it is caught. You catch a spirit of prayer by being in the place where people are praying. Ayasota. Glory to Jesus. Aha. Uh -huh. So, uh, uh, for, 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 forgive me for taking you back a little bit. Uh, I, I thought I should. Uh, some of you might have come saying, uh, believers wardrobe i know <laughs> i know many of you are wondering what are they going, what are they going to talk about this time with this wardrobe thing yeah, i am going to talk about it i have a full five days to talk about it don't worry but i am now trying to get you in the to understand why we do these things is this okay is this okay you you have to catch a spirit of prayer you have you, when you when you are around people praying Somehow you start, you start praying. There's a, 
the spirit of prayer may it fall on somebody this week in the name of jesus may you become a prayer warrior this week in the name of jesus may the grace of prayer that is on this ministry fall on you in the name of jesus may the grace of prayer that is on my life fall on you in the name of jesus and you know the other thing that happens is that you know you you you, you just when you are with people that have been praying sometimes they are not even praying they are just talking to you but there is an anoint there is an atmo- there is a grace on them that you have you ever been with somebody and after talking with them you just feel like I, I think i need to i need to take my prayer life to another level they have not said anything about prayer they just had a casual conversation with you about some few things but there is something about them there is an anointing there is a grace that i received as i was uh, seeking god somewhere and i'm praying that uh, somebody receives it in the name of jesus in the name of jesus yes yeah, I went somewhere and I received something. And uh, I just pray that somebody receives it this week. Name of Jesus. So that is the altar. Now the seminars. After we started the altar, okay, then the Lord spoke to me. I was seated where I am seated right now. That is about 20 months ago. I was seated at the very spot. I love this spot where I'm seated now. It's, I think there's a, a, a special angel and the, the heaven is, <laughs> I think, open above this spot in my house here in Kavali. But, you know, the Lord spoke to me about having seminars every month, a full week, a full week of speaking the word of God into people's lives. A full week of equipping the saints. I just got the realization that through these seminars, I would be able to discharge my duty as an apostle. In in the, For those who believe that I am an apostle to them, there are those who don't, it's okay. But for those who believe that I have been sent to them, this seminar, is a special opportunity for me to discharge my duty. Ephesians chapter 4 verse 11 says, And his gifts were varied. He himself appointed and gave men to us, some to be apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, some pastors and teachers. 12 says, His intention was the perfecting and the full equipping of the saints, his consecrated people, that they should do the work of ministering towards building up Christ's body. Hallelujah. So that verse 12 happens in these seminars. Hallelujah. Mm. That verse 12 In this seminar, the, there is the grace to perfect and equip the saints. At the end of this seminar, the, the, the demand that you should place on God this week is that you shall be perfected. That something about you, uh, that your spiritual walk, that that there shall be that at, by Friday, you'll be a different believer from the one you are today. Yeah, it's my prayer. It's my faith. You that you can't stay at the same level. Yeah, in, in this seminar. I am doing the work of ministering towards building up Christ's body. This is a gathering of the body of Christ this morning, this week. It's like a one-week conference, a one-week gathering of the body of Christ. And we gather 
to be perfected as children of God. We gather to be equipped. We gather to be edified. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. I pray that somebody's prayer life shall be edified. I pray that somebody's journey of faith shall be edified. I pray that someone's faith shall be stirred up. I pray that somebody's... uh, Oh, someone's ministry shall be edified. I pray that somebody will receive a fresh grace to run their race in the name of Jesus. I pray that somebody will be refreshed in this seminar in the name of Jesus. I pray that somebody's vision will be clarified. I pray that somebody will get again clarity of thought concerning what God called you to do. I pray that somebody, things will get clear again in the name of Jesus. I pray that somebody will be energized to serve God again in the name of Jesus. Those that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. I pray that someone's strength shall be renewed this week in the name of Jesus. As we wait on him every day, Shia la brother. I pray that somebody shall be edified, Lord. That times of refreshing shall come upon somebody right from the throne of God. In the name of Jesus. Glory to God. Glory to God. So, when we do this, the whole intention, verse 13 of Ephesians 4 says, that it might develop, which, which one? The body of Christ, that is you. That it might develop until we all attain oneness in the faith, the comprehension of the knowledge of the Son of God, that we might arrive at really mature manhood the complete completeness of personality that is nothing less than the standard height of Christ's own perfection, that we may no longer be children tossed like sheep to and fro by chance gusts of teaching, wavering with every changing wind of doctrine. After attending these seminars, the expectation is that you will no longer be children who are tossed here and there. The people who attend these seminars, they are not the ones who are moved here and there by every new doctrine and things like that. They are stable. They are, in these seminars, you are established. In these seminars, you are grounded. In these seminars, you are taught the word. In these seminars, (laughs) you are stability in the faith. Hallelujah. Uh, let me show you one more thing that I was reading my Bible last night, late night. Mm. You know, there used to be some program on Capital FM called Late Death. <laughs> now, it's important that some of us who know you can actually have a late date with the word of God. Anyway, First Thessalonians 2, 11 to 13, I read a, a verse that speaks into what we do in the seminars. It says, For you know how as a father dealing with his children, we used to exhort each of you personally, stimulating and encouraging and charging you to live lives worthy of God who calls you into his own kingdom and the glorious blessedness into which true believers will enter after Christ's return. You see that? This is Paul writing to his spiritual children. He said, you know how as a father... We used to exhort you, each of you personally, stimulating and encouraging and charging you. Now, the the seminar is also my opportunity to exhort the spiritual children that God has given. So if somebody is 
by God's grace, a spiritual child to me. The seminar is their time of feeding from their father. Yeah. Because, and now you see, exhorting each of you personally, I don't have the time, I don't have the resources to go personally to the children in Imbale, the children in Tororo, the children in Chigali, the children in Sweden, in where, you know, to each of them speak to them personally and encourage them and charge them to live lives worthy of God. So what God has helped us is to give us a week of the gathering of all the spiritual children. So if you know one of your brothers and sisters who is not here, you tell them that it seems they are now spiritual children by just name. Because for me, being a spiritual child to me is hard work. Is you, you have to learn the word. <laughs> you have to learn the word. Mine is not those emotional things. Of, My father is... Uh, <laughs> being a, a child to me is hard work of studying the word of God and doing it. So this week is where I get to uh, stimulate and encourage. I pray that somebody will be stimulated in the name of Jesus. I pray that somebody will be encouraged, somebody will be charged in the mighty name of Jesus that somebody will, oh, will be pushed into their destiny in the name of Jesus. That somebody will be fed from the throne of grace. Yeah. So that happens in the seminar. And then finally, in the seminar, we have an online healing service. Isn't God wonderful? Every day from Monday to Friday, 8 to 9 p.m., we are going to be gathered here. Don't miss, please. We have discovered that the power of God knows no distance. And uh, I can tell you, there are many people here that have received their healing that have even never met. Yeah. There are many people that have received their healing as we ministered and prayed together with them online. Online. Here, 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 here. On this altar. Ah. And we are not talking about, uh, you know, uh, healing of, I think I am healed, like confessing it just. No, we are talking about, I was diabetic, now I am no longer diabetic. Those are the things we are talking about. I had a skin condition, now I no longer have a skin condition. I never used to take honey, now I take honey. <laughs> I had this, now I don't have it. It has happened. So, again, God has given me the healing uh, grace, the healing anointing, and I don't have the time and the resources to dispense it to everybody. And for me, my grace is not just to heal the sick, but to train the church to heal the sick. Because... All of us as believers, we have a mandate to heal the sick. Mark chapter 16 verse 18 says, Believers shall lay their hands on the sick and the sick shall recover. So if you are a believer, you are supposed to be a doctor. I always say that for me, why I'm humble as a doctor is because my profession is the only one in the Bible where everybody else, everybody else, my profession, any believer can do it. So I, I can't be proud. But I'm a doctor. Any believer, when they understand who they are, they can do what I studied. They can even do it better. <laughs> so, so my grace is not just to heal the sick, but to teach the saints how to heal the sick. 
and that one we do it every night of the seminar 8 to 9 p.m we are ministering the sick so if you are sick the spirit of the lord is upon me because he has anointed me to preach the good news the poor has anointed me to set free the captives to set at liberty those who are oppressed to open the eyes of the blind it's going to happen for you this week in the name of Jesus. The way Jesus was anointed is the way we have been anointed. The Holy Spirit with which, which was on him is the Holy Spirit that is on us. Yes. As the Father sent him, he has sent us. We are sent to heal you. Yes. So if you're sick, in any way, spirit, soul, and body, you are in the right place because the healing virtue of God, that healing virtue that moved out of Jesus into the woman with an issue of blood, that healing virtue is available this week. Ah, yeah. That healing virtue, even now, but by the way, let's not even wait for the evening. If you are here right now and you have a certain pain, you have a certain issue, I release the healing virtue you so that you know what's going to happen in the evening receive healing in your body in the name of jesus receive healing you know somebody who has pain right now in the middle of uh, like on your face but in the middle of your forehead there is pain there receive healing right now in the name of jesus <laughs> son of the living god it's going to be a great evening because there is already somebody being healed of a lower you are attending this morning and you have a lower abdominal pain a lower abdominal pain the lord is healing you right now receive healing in the name of jesus another person with pain in your right right knee right knee and it, it increases when you try to fold the knee. Receive healing. Receive healing right now <laughs> in the name of Jesus. That is how it happens. That is how it happens through words of knowledge, through words of prophecy, and all those kind of things. The healer is here. The healer is here. Hallelujah. To God be the glory.